Welcome back to another edition of the North Star Takes Podcast. Once again, we're doing our head coaching series where we go over uh, multiple head coaching candidates, a few that are, have interviewed or are rumored to interview with the Minnesota Vikings. Today we'll be talking about D'Amico Ryan's defensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers. Um, he's had five years coaching experience, all with San Francisco, uh, defensive quality control coach, inside linebackers coach, and then getting promoted to defensive coordinator. So obviously he's played in the league. He's a younger guy, only being 36 years old, um, 36 or 37, I should say. And quickly rising up the ranks here as a rumored head coaching candidate. Obviously the Vikings are not the only team interested in him. Um, it appears he's kind of got like a fiery personality that players like to rally around. Obviously he's got good defensive acumen if the 49ers continue to have these good defenses year after year, and he's a part of that staff. So what are some things that you like about D'Amico Ryan's, Alberta? I think it's a good sign if he's quick of a riser all the way up to defensive coordinator. It means he's got some uh, potential there that Kyle Shanahan uh, identified as the replacement to Robert Sala after he left the Jets last year. So I, I think that that says a lot because I think Kyle Shanahan's well respected coach in this league and he's he's very good in his own right. So mm -hmm. uh, that excites me. And I love that, like you said, they continuously rank towards the top of the league in a lot of major statistical categories as far as defense goes in yep. recent years. And that includes. Um, being top five in sacks this year, as well as being number six in total defense allowed. So I think that's great. And I think that says a lot about your defense too, especially when you consider like, I don't, I don't love their secondary by any means. I think there's uh, mm -hmm. some holes there. I mean, I don't watch a lot of Niners games myself, but still uh, I think he makes it work with whoever's out there. I know they get, they have a lot of injuries too. It feels like, feels like the Niners are always banged up. So uh, they always start with that front four, and that's obviously dominant. But I yeah. think the evolution of a lot of the guys on that defense, like, for instance, uh, Fred Warner, I think, is a prime example. Um, yeah. Being that Ryan's was an inside linebacker coach before, he's probably worked with Warner since he came in the league, and now mm -hmm. Warner's legitimately one of the best inside linebackers in the entire league. So I think that that's huge for um, my liking him, too. So I think there's a, there's a lot to like here about Ryan's. It's just, um, yeah, he's a, he's a defensive guy, which gives me a little pause, but we can get into that a little bit. Yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, it's it's kind of impressive that he's a, a quick riser in the ranks of coaching and the fact that he's all of a sudden a hot head coaching candidate as well. Yeah. Clearly, there must be some impressive leadership qualities there, which is always important, I think, for an NFL coach. And like he's played in the league before, so he's got some clout mm -hmm. with the players. Yes. Um, they'll respect him. They'll, you know, he'll command the team. He'll and honestly, for me, as long as he's it able to you know coach the entire team and not like uh, this is our fear with hiring defensive guys is they're just going to want to focus on the defensive side of the ball like a mike yeah. zimmer yeah. but i think a lot of coaches are you know get past that and they realize that you know more like a mike tomlin where you know you have to coach the entire team the whole the whole thing is important so mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not out on D'Amico ryan's he's certainly not my top choice but um i'm, I'm kind of open to it honestly just just based off leadership qualities alone because the more and more this goes on, I think the leadership of the of the coach is the most important part of it to me. So what gives you some cause for concern with D'Amico Ryans? You already kind of mentioned just the fact that he's a defensive guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's probably my, my biggest my biggest holdback here. I think being a defensive guy, that concerns you with the revolving door that could potentially happen with the offensive side of the ball. But like you said, I think the biggest thing is the leadership here. And if he can really lead this team, then it's not really that big of a uh, concern, I guess. It's just – what, no matter what your background is in football, if you can uh, really be a galvanizing force in the locker room, bringing guys together and uh, leading them out every Sunday, getting guys ready to play every week, I think that's that's probably the biggest thing for me. So yep. if he can if he can prove he's a good leader, then it's not really a concern of mine, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Um, yeah, obviously the defensive thing makes it tough just because he's probably not going to come in and establish an offensive system which means you're bringing in an offensive coordinator you're potentially losing in a couple of years, which we've constantly harped about, but it's a big deal mm -hmm. considering that's what the Vikings have been going through ever since Zimmer was hired. So um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I feel like the way the league's trending, it's, it's best to get an offensive coach, but you don't want to do it just to do it either. Like he, he needs sure. to be qualified for the job. He's so, the right guy. Exactly. So, you know, if D'Amico Ryans is truly the right guy and you think he's going to be the perfect fit with your GM that you end up hiring, and you feel like he can establish a culture here that players really respect him, and it's a collaborative environment, almost like a family environment, which I think is the direction the Vikings are probably going to go in. But also, you know, he coaches players hard enough to the point where they'll listen to him, and it's not too friendly like uh, some 
player coaches have been in the past. So exactly. um, on a scale of one to 10, what would you rank him as in terms of, you know, would you be willing to hire him and where he ranks, I guess, in your, in your power rankings? Put him at a solid six and a half. I think he's young and got some promise. I think it concerns me a little bit, uh, or if he's a defensive coach, but, and there's probably not a ton of experience there, but enough to the point where I would consider a head coaching job. So I think he's a solid six and a half, a little above average. Yeah, I, I, I'm in the same ballpark. I'd give him about five and a half, six. Um, I think, you know, potentially in a couple of years, if he doesn't get a head coaching job this offseason, then he could be a really hot candidate just based on the fast rising nature of his of his work. But um, yeah, I'm with you. I just I'd still prefer the offensive path. And I just I worry about having to lose a play caller, you know, every couple of years and having to restart the offense over and over exactly. again. Especially when eventually here we're going to be developing a young quarterback, whether that's right away this next season or um, in a couple of years. So I definitely think he's got. I think I definitely think he'll be a head coach at some point in the NFL, but um, just don't know if he's quite the top choice for me. So mm-hmm. exactly, <clears throat> that'll do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Be sure to give us a follow on both Twitter and Instagram. Uh, give this video a like if you're a Vikings fan, if you're a D'Amico Ryan's fan. Be sure to hit that subscribe button as well and leave your comments below on your thoughts about D'Amico Ryans, what you think he can bring to this team, and where he ranks for you as a head coaching candidate. And until next time, uh, when we keep releasing these head coaching series videos, thanks for watching.